welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Teresa Wood, and today we're at Antique Tables Made Daily in Sperryville, Virginia. Today's show is gonna be really interesting. I'm very excited about it. I need a table, and I've decided to keep it local, and it's gonna be a table for my dining room, which is fairly casual, but uh, that's my my style and my approach. So they're gonna make a table for me. I'm designing the table from start to finish with the help of Tom and his crew. And so we're gonna go inside and see what's going on. So today we have Tom Von Fonge with us. He's with Antique Tables Main Daily and I'm here to have a table made. And so we're gonna kind of talk about the design process and what we can do um, for a custom table. Good, good, that's what I like to do. Yeah, good, good. We have a beautiful showroom here. Thank Lots you. of things to choose from. Yep. Um, all these are different styles, I take it, right? That's right, we've got uh, uh, our farm table, we've got French legs over here, Cabriol. Yeah. This is kind of a fancier trestle design. Nice. That's our famous Irish immigrant table. It's a uh -huh. real big, hefty uh -huh. five inch leg. Uh, you know, round tables, a kitchen island over there at a Wonderful. maple. All types of styles in here. Lots of trestles. Trestles are really selling a lot right now. Yeah, I like that. Well, that's what I'm interested in is a trestle table. Oh, good. Yeah. So I brought a few pictures that I brought, uh, took off the internet. Okay. From like house.com and Pinterest, just some of the places that I find a lot of good ideas. And so what I'd like to do is take that idea and okay. maybe refine it a little bit since my table I wanted to have a little Texas flair uh -huh. to it. So we could go over those pictures and then I think we've already selected a wood, or I have in my mind selected yeah. a wood. I wanted to do the, the warmy chestnut. Okay, sure. So is that possible? Yeah, I'd like to see what you got. Great, good. Well, I'll grab those papers and we'll take a look at them. Okay, Tom, so I brought along a few pictures. Okay, like great. Like I was mentioning, uh, this is the, the stack. Here, I okay. tried to call it down just a little bit. So I'm interested in a trestle table. Um, I think I want the whole thing to be wood. Okay. And I like this design here. Okay. Uh, it sort of has the, the, I don't even know what you call these, but the board's going down to the stretcher. Yeah, it's kind of a timber frame look. I like timber that. Timber frame, okay. So this is kind of one that I'm, I'm leaning toward. It's, uh, the only thing I want to change about it though, instead of the boards coming mm -hmm. down, I think right. I'd like to use some metal turnbuckles. Oh, we did that one time. Yeah, yeah. I, I know how to do that. Yep. Okay, great, great. So we can talk about turnbuckles a okay. little bit later, but, and then this is one for the legs. Oh, yeah. um, I like the design that you have on the one in the showroom, okay. but I wanted it a little bit more curvy, sort okay. of that German, Texas, hill country kind yeah, of Yeah, because this is, there's not a lot in the middle there, so you want just more uh, design and thicker and more massive like Texas? Right. Yeah, I want it gotcha. massive. You know, everything's right. bigger in Texas. So this is sort of the, the leg design we're going to be working from, hopefully. And so since you don't have anything exactly like that, mm -hmm. can you like do a drawing for me or something sure. that I can look at? Or yeah. maybe will it be to scale or is it just on paper? Well, I tell you what, uh, we'll make a, an actual quarter inch plywood template. We'll make a couple of them for you to oh, choose okay. from. And oh, great. try and make them kind of Texas looking mm -hmm. and, and then you can decide you know, what you like. Okay, good, that's great. Okay, and so this is just, now this style table here, the top is a plank mm -hmm. top, I okay. think is what you call it. Now, right. the one that we're sitting at here is chestnut, right? Right, this is all Which American is chestnut, yep. But this is not the plank style. This right. is it's seamless. Seamless, yep. okay. So I've decided not to go, this is kind of a little example of the plank style. I decided to go more with the seamless, I yeah, think. That's I good. like that. Plank, a uh, real plank top like that, it's definitely, a, we call it a crumb catcher. Oh. When you're cleaning your table, and all the crumbs drop in. And ah, okay. Not really, it's pretty, but it's not always a good idea. Gotcha, okay. Oh, and here's a picture of the table with a couple of turnbuckles. Oh, okay, let me so see I that like one. I like that style there. Let's see, I show for the camera there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to see, but those are industrial turnbuckles made out of steel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do that, no problem. Okay, good. Maybe that'll look nice. Okay, great. So that's an idea. And that's just a, a picture of the turn buckle up close. Okay. It's not uh, the style that I'm gotcha. interested in, just the turn buckle. So that's not a problem. That would not be a problem. And I'm oh, glad you didn't pick great. this one because that one just goes straight across, and as you tighten the turn buckle, it just pulls the legs in, and uh -huh. it's not really a good design. Uh -huh. This other one has a um, stretcher on the bottom, right? and as you tighten these, it actually makes the whole table stronger. Pulls it together. So this is kind of a 
fake design gotcha. just to throw something in there. Okay, good, good. So I think we're, we're headed down the right path. Yeah. So that's the, the basic design. So, and I picked the wood. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that I need to, to think um, about at this point? Uh, well, let's take a look at that table over here that you kind of like and we'll see if we modify it to make it more Texas looking. Okay. Okay. Great. Let's go on over. Okay. So this is the one that's similar. Okay. So I like, yep. I think. So can we look down here? Um, I like the legs, and we're going to take that other design and modify it a little bit. Okay. But I'd like to see this wood maybe thicker. Is that possible? You know, um, let me think about that for a second. Okay. Um, you know what? We do have a couple chestnut beams. I think mm -hmm. I could saw them in half and put them back together and make that a lot thicker. Okay. Yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. And I, I do have some chestnut that we can laminate to make these no problem at all. So yeah, yeah, I haven't done that before, but I, let's do that. That sounds okay, good. Okay, good, yeah, because I want that hefty feeling. Right. I think with the cut outs, it'll be sort of graceful, but with mm -hmm. a little bit more weight to it. And then we'll have the, the, the steel turnbuckles. stretchers. Oh yeah, turnbuckles rather, in the center there. So I think that'll be nice. Now, what about size? Because I didn't, I think I want like a seven footer, but okay. I, I would like to be able to seat more people, you know, if we have company, you know, holidays, that sort right. of thing. So is, do, I don't see leaves on any of the tables. Is there a way to... I can definitely them? put leaves on. We okay. have uh, iron brackets that we put on and we can add uh, leaves to the ends. And um, let's take a look at this table over here just mm -hmm. to give an idea of those turnbuckles and a stretcher. Okay. Down here, uh, you would probably have a wood stretcher right here. Uh -huh. and we'll put an eye bowl here. Mm -hmm. no, I'm sorry, we'll put the eye bowl here and have okay. the turnbuckle come up to the top. That's what okay. you're looking for, yes. right? On both yes. sides? Uh -huh. Right, and do we have to have the stretcher with the turnbuckles? It, it's a good idea because if you don't have the stretcher, as you tighten the turnbuckle, if you can imagine two diagonals, right. it keeps pulling this in and in and in. Okay. This stops it from pulling and, and makes the whole unit very strong. Okay, gotcha. So the turnbuckle will actually be aesthetic and functional. Okay, great. Which would be nice. Okay, I think I like that then. And let me ask you this too. Uh, see the thickness of this? Right. Because uh, you were talking about this being thick. Uh, what width and height of that uh, for the stretcher are you thinking about it like this one or thicker or wider or uh, narrower I don't know I kind of you know actually Tom I think I'll leave that up to you because okay. you have the design eye and I don't really know what these pieces are going to look like you know okay. in my mind's eye I mean when I see this proportionally it looks great mm -hmm. but I can't visualize okay. what I'm asking you to do so I'm going to leave that up to you guys you guys are the right. artists and craftsmen so yeah I got one more you. question for you I was just sure. thinking you mentioned you would like it to look kind of Texas mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed that you can get these cast iron stars online that oh. used to hold, they call them earthquake stars, that keep buildings from falling apart during earthquakes. Right, yeah, I've seen those with the metal yeah. rods through them, okay. What do you think about one of those on either end of your trestle? Oh, I like that. I think that's a great idea. We might be able to make the turnbuckle bolt go right through it. Right through it. it? Yeah. I think it'd be beautiful. Okay. Absolutely. So we'd just be mounted on the wood on yep. this side with the turnbuckle coming through. Yeah. I would, like it. It would look cool and it would also uh, be functional. Yeah, give it a little Texas touch. There you go. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. So we have the design finalized. Right. I think we've covered all aspects of the table. And so now we're going to head down to the workshop and actually start building the table. So I'm pretty excited. Oh, that'd Ready be fun. To go? Let's do it. All right, let's go. Now, you may or may not like these. Mm -hmm. That's okay. First thing for Texas is yes, sir. with a star, mm -hmm. trying to come up with kind of a saloon look. Right. And uh, this would go about right there. And the star, let me flip it up. The star goes that way. Oh, okay. There, there we go. And nice. I don't know. Is that too Texas C for you? Or yeah, I think, you know, it's a little saloony for yep. me. Uh, yep. The house that, that I'm building this table or having you guys build right. this table for, the house is actually an Italian farmhouse style. So it's ah, very casual. Gotcha. And this, while I'm being from Texas, I love this. It's very near and dear to my heart. I think that the style of the house, probably not that yep. one. Yep. So, this is better for more of a, like just a farmhouse. Yeah, All yeah. Right, let's try another one. Okay. You said you like kind of a lot of frilly. I and, did uh, like the curvy. It sort of reminds me of the German and, you know, Texas, the hill yeah. country. We have a lot of the, the German culture there. Well, Ooh. this one, this <gasps> nice. one is actually wider than the one we had up in the showroom. Yeah, I like that. And it's got a lot of movement on it. Oh, that's nice. With the really thick chestnut that we're going to use, this that'll be, be really hefty. Thick. Yep. And then 
This pattern here, there is no cut up on the bottom. It just mm -hmm. stays flat. It gives it more of a, uh, uh, like a beam look. Right. And where the other piece is cut oh, up. Oh, I see the difference Yeah, here. it makes yeah. quite a bit of difference. So okay. this one down, mm -hmm. we could put adjustable lever you know, on the bottom so you can uh, twist it up okay. or down to the right height. Oh, good, but, you know, good. Let's see what that one will look like. Uh, go up here, yeah. about like that. Oh, I like that one. Whoops, Oops. sorry. Yeah. You know what, I'll just lay it down on the camera and get a better view there we of go. it that way. And go back. I like, like it. You like that one good? Yeah, I like that one. That's perfect. All right, very then we'll nice. Add a star. This star may not be the same size as a cast iron, but right. you want to put that about where you think it would look good? Yeah, I think. Well, we're going to do the turnbuckle, right? So we yeah, want to try and get. Yeah, the turnbuckle be on the get, inside. Yep. Okay. So I'm thinking somewhere down in this area. About like that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's so what do you cool. Think? You like that right away. I um, love that one. Yep, yeah. That's great. Yeah, I have great. another piece of wood going down here that holds the tabletop to the uh, trestle. Okay. But that is a very nice, really beautiful design. Yeah, and so. I like the I like the weight of it. It's nice and big at the bottom, but still has a lot of curves. Very nice. Perfect. Oh, Thank well, I'm you. I'm so glad we got it uh, with just two designs. So yeah. It makes it easier. That's for amazing, me. and we didn't do this for TV. That's really how it worked That's out, how isn't it? Works it? Out. You did great. You did great. And that is almost exactly like the one that I gave Tom a picture of. So um, I couldn't tell any difference just looking at it. So you did a great job. All right. Okay, Tom, so it sounds like the design's nailed down. Yep. We picked this. All right. Um, we've done all the work over in the showroom as far as the size, the leaves, that sort of thing. Yep. So what do I do next? Just go home and wait for you guys to build it and deliver it? Or? Well, you know what? Uh, we could pick out the wood if you like. And oh, you, I actually so have I the can actually here. look at it? You can actually look at it and see what it looks like. Yeah, and say, I, I like love that. that. I would love to do that. Let's go do it. Okay, let's Come go on. outside. Go to the woodshed. <laughs> oh, that's never a good thing. <laughs> My dad used to say that. That was bad. So, Tom, we just left the showroom. I picked out the style of the table, the type of wood, which is chestnut. Right. And then you mentioned that I could look at some boards. Sure. For the table. And we kind of picked them out together, maybe. All right, that sounds good. Okay. Um, this is actually is our woodshed where we keep everything. I build it off the ground to keep everything really dry. Okay. And come on in here. I'll show All you what we got. Great. We'll go up the back steps. It's a little safer. Oh, I like that. Yeah. All right. Oh, man. This is our chestnut in this bin right here. Okay. And uh, as you can see, you wanted lots of nail holes. Yes, I do. Because we have some customers that don't want nail holes. We have oh, some that don't okay. even want wormholes. Really? But uh, so we try and you know keep boards the way that you want it. And are but, these these are nail holes, yes. right? All of these. So those are like original nail holes, like from when this wood was exactly. used in, in West Virginia, I guess is where you said yep. it came from. And they've from. turned black because the rust uh, rusted nail makes like an acid uh, deposit inside the oh. wood and just turns black over oh, time. Okay, like just oxidation, I guess. Yep. And Wonderful. the wormholes do the same thing. They turn black, so it'll all match. Okay. But that's a beauty right there. We could go uh, uh, joint plainness to see if you like that. So that's a good board. It's a good board. All right, you let's You can't get do better it. than that. Beautiful. All right. Okay, so we picked down a board, Tom, and you said this was a good board. So I like the way it looks. Mm -hmm. I love the nail holes and all the, of course, a lot of this is going to go away, the color and stuff, right. right, when you plane it down. But so what do you look for in a board? that makes this a good board that you can use. Right. Well, I tell you, it's um, uh, amazing. When you go look at a barn or an old building or whatever and start pulling boards mm -hmm. out, how many of them have big splits? How many of them are really badly cupped? Mm -hmm. Some of them are warped. Um, some of them you hold the board up and they look like a C. They, they, they oh, warp really? that direction. Um, some of them just have great big holes in them. I mean, there's so many oh. things. So, I like to hand pick my boards to try and get the straightest and flattest that I can. Mm -hmm. If we built kitchen cabinets, it wouldn't matter because you have short sections, you can mill them and make oh, anything okay. you want. But uh, to build a good tabletop, you need really flat lumber, minimum warp. Okay. So uh, this so, board is a, a good example of that. Okay. And I'll, I'll, hold, I'll put it up here so the camera can see it. See that it is fairly straight board when you, when you eye down it. So I always get down here and check it out. I just see a teeny tiny twist down on this end, which won't matter if I turn that into a leaf. Okay. So I think I'm gonna make that your leaf, uh, one, one of the pieces for your leaf. Okay, and how many of these boards, are they all the same size, and how many do you need for a table? Right, this is a, uh, what they call a two by 10. A two by 10, when it dries, after they saw it at the sawmill, it shrinks down. Oh yeah. And on oh. Texas, they get bigger, but yeah. on the East Coast, they get smaller. Well, but not that's, everybody uh, can be from Texas. <laughs> Nine and a half inches there is what we end up with. 
So on your table, uh, we're going to need about six boards probably. By the time okay. you trim out any defects and mill it and put it all back together, it'll be like a six-board top. Okay. And so when you said sometimes they have like holes or rotting places uh -huh. in them or bad places, can you fix that board or you just have to sometimes not use that can. part? Sometimes we can. Let me uh, walk over here and show you some examples. Okay. Of, uh, here, here's like I was talking about. Yeah, that's a big hole. I mean, if you can see through it, you know, uh -huh. that might be a problem. You might lose a glass in there, right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. these, uh, I mean, here's another example. A lot of times you get boards that have big bark rolled edges. Sometimes uh -huh. they'll go down the whole board. Okay. Uh, it really takes away from the board. But uh, this is full of pieces that got rejected for, you know, all kinds. of just too much on the end there. We had yeah, to chop it off. I see. And on and on and on. More big holes, rot right. here, you know, oh, from an old, rot. it's okay. an old branch. Oh, gotcha. And, uh, you know, can't put that in there. Okay. So that just gives you some idea of some so things we have to cut out. So that's pieces that you can't use. Right. What well, do you do with that? Well, what we do uh, with these, some of them, you can actually cut around it and glue it up and make these parts right over here. Mm -hmm. uh, like your trestle base part was right. made from one that had a great big hole here. And it, you know the board was this wide, so I cut it out and glued two of them together, uh -huh. and okay. then you can make the bottom of the trestle. But other parts, if they're not good for anything, uh, let me see if I have an example here. We cut them up into thin strips, and it makes a wormy chestnut kindling. Wow, I love that. Yeah, it's got lots of worm holes. And nice, and so you can use that. It's good for starting a fire because it's yeah, dry, it's right? Yeah, it's super dry, oh, and that's... people just love having it bundled up next to their fireplace oh, and they're beautiful. like It'd they may perfect. never burn it they may right. just want to treasure it but they're oh. like oh yes we have wormy chestnut for our kindling yes yeah. i like it so nice. it all gets recycled somehow i like it very nice so chestnut yeah i love chestnut i know a little bit about chestnut but maybe you can kind of share the history of like american chestnut because there's okay. chinese chestnut right right american chestnut and then this is old american chestnut so yep. like where did it come from why is it hard to get now you know that sort of okay. thing okay well i'll tell you what i know um <clears throat> here on the east coast chestnut was uh, the most dominant tree in fact in all of america there were more chestnut trees than oak trees which is really hard to believe today because they're pretty much wiped out. There's a mm -hmm. few living examples, but not many. <clears throat> what happened was uh, somewhere after the turn of the century, they had a World's Fair, and they brought in a Chinese chestnut tree. Mm -hmm. uh, some people would call it a Japanese chestnut, but it doesn't really matter. It came and brought a blight, and it wiped out all the American chestnut trees in a very short period of time. Really? It spread you know, from uh, uh, the East Coast all the way across uh, the nation. And what was interesting about chestnut in the 1800s they found out, first of all, when the settlers came here, that it doesn't really rot. I mean, everything does sooner or later, but it's right. very slow to rot. So they started making split rail fencing out of it, and it would stay up for over 100 years, where oak would disappear in 25 years. And they found out that the bark on a chestnut tree has the right type of acid for tanning leather. And so they would, when they would saw a tree and take it to the sawmill, they would save the bark and ship it to all the tanneries. And our local tannery here in Luray, which is one of the biggest ones on the East Coast, used to get 30 million tons of chestnut bark a year uh, oh, wow. delivered by railroad just to make uh, you know, the tanned leather that they did there. Really? So chestnuts, besides eating them, everyone yeah. loved American chestnuts uh, for eating. It was, a, it was a really valuable tree for a lot of different things. Yeah. But what makes it so cool today is it's, it's gone. It got wiped out. You can find it in some structures if it was made out of chestnut. Mm -hmm. Your table <clears throat> is made from an old schoolhouse, and what's neat about it is when the guy that was carrying the schoolhouse down told me, um, he goes, this is not an old schoolhouse. And I'm like, what do you mean it's not old? He goes, well, it was built in 1930. And for us, that's not really old, because we right. usually get structures from the 1800s. But in 1930, that was like the peak of the chestnut harvest. It was already dead. Um, and uh, sawmills were having them bring in logs you know, by the thousands so they could saw it into uh, framing material because mm -hmm. it was perfect to put under a house, under a schoolhouse, in a factory. Doesn't rot. Right. Uh, it's bug resistant. It didn't matter. It already had worm holes in it. It was, you know, once it's dry, it's perfect. Right. So a lot of structures from the 1930s have American chestnut in them. And um, I've been in a lot of houses built in the 30s, and they trim the whole house in chestnut. It's not unusual at all. Oh, they don't. So uh, that's part of the history that I know about. Okay. And so the wormholes, are they like from the 
the blight, or was that just something that was always in chestnut trees? Do you know? Yeah, what happens is when a chestnut tree dies mm -hmm. and it falls over into the woods, mm -hmm. then the worms oh, take over. Gotcha. Okay. So the worms are not the blight. The okay. blight's more of a bacteria virus. Right. Uh, the wormholes actually happen when the tree falls over and the worms take over and start doing their thing. Oh, so when you see wormy chestnut, it was a tree that had died. It yep. wasn't cut while it was still living. Right. With worms in it. It fell down and then was used. Exactly right. Okay. Yep. Interesting. And a lot of log yards back then, they would have thousands of logs waiting to be sawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, the worms would get in then, too. Okay, gotcha. So you get some, some of these will have a few wormholes, some have a lot. Mm -hmm. We tried to pick out more uh, for your tabletop, a lot of wormholes, so you right. like them. Yeah. Other people uh, don't really like the wormholes. We want a few to show off, say, oh, there's a wormhole right there. Uh -huh. But um, they don't want too many. <laughs> so uh, we try and pick out the boards for what the customer wants. Okay, good. And then you also mentioned to me earlier about um, sometimes you find like even bullets embedded in, in the, the planks or right. the boards that you have or chestnuts themselves. Yep, that's true. And We've had, uh, we'll be sawing uh, or running through the planer and all of a sudden we hear a very distinctive noise. It's not as sharp as if you hit a nail mm -hmm. and but you can tell something hit and when you pull the board up there'll be uh, the remains of a bullet and it'll be super shiny because the blade just you know shined uh -huh. it up as it went across or sometimes we'll find a whole American chestnut inside of a board and uh, what happens is a chestnut falls while the tree is growing with mm -hmm. two branches going out and then the tree continues to grow around it and it gets trapped inside the tree wow. and we've seen two or three of those here it's kind of neat you know the yeah. chestnut's still there and uh, grew around it. I like that. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Very nice. Excellent. Well, you want to take this to the planer? Yep. All right, let's All go. All right. First, I'll saw off a little piece here. And you see what we got here. All right. Save that for one of your leaves. All right, this is going to go over a joiner. So usually we would uh, go over it with a, uh, a metal detector. You know, make uh -huh. sure all the metal is oh, out. Oh, gotcha. But on chestnut, I can usually just do it visually. You see the nail holes real clearly. Mm -hmm. It looks like the guy really did a good job of denailing it. So I'm just going to do a site inspection. Yeah, I don't see anything in there. So when this was in the building that was torn down, there had been nails in all of these holes. And yeah, somebody were. had to actually hand pull. They pull them all out. Wow. It's a lot of work. Nice. Yeah, and I noticed on the end here, you can actually see, I guess those There's are where a, the nails all, went yep. all the way through. And we try, when we build tables, we try not to put that on the end on purpose. Uh, people don't mind them on the edges, but they don't mm -hmm. seem to like them on the end grain. But... Um, uh, if a table, if, we're, if we only have a board to say 10 foot long and they order a 10 foot table, sometimes right. they, they, they're going to be there. There's nothing we can do about gotcha. it. But yeah, this is just, we'll joint plane this and then this will get trimmed. That will go off of there. Okay. Unless you really like them, we'll put them in there. Well, you know, Tom, I like, I like the nail holes a lot, but I think you're right. I don't think I want them on the end of the table. I think it might detract from Yeah, it's it. just like it's going overboard. It's a little too many nail holes. I think know? so too. So those will just be cut off on my table, right? That sounds good. Smooth. Perfect. So Tom... This, you said, is the joiner, right? I keep That's calling correct. it the planer. So this yep. is the joiner, and do you have more than one, or is this just... Well, yeah, I've got... Uh, this is a 16-inch joiner, so it'll, it will joint a board up to 16 inches wide. Okay. I have another joiner over there that's 12 inches wide. Oh, okay. And when the shop's real busy here and everybody's here, um, it's like you always need a joiner for something. So mm -hmm. if you only have one, guys kind of standing around waiting to use it. Uh, so I have one that will handle up to 12 inch boards, which handles most of what we do. Mm -hmm. This larger one here uh, is great for big wide boards. But the other thing we use a joiner for is when you want to put a tabletop together, right. the edges right here, right. they have to be perfectly straight so that when the next board comes up to it, uh, let's just say there's another board here. Uh -huh. When it comes up to it, if the line is flawless uh, and you put glue in there, mm -hmm. once it dries, it will never come apart. Uh, where if you just run it through a table saw and glue it together, there's a lot of air and other things in there right. from the saw blade, and you don't get that great of a joint. So that's why it's called a jointer. Joint. Oh, it okay. makes, makes sense a joint now. really straight and flat. Okay. It also makes one part of the board, this top right here or bottom, perfectly flat. So that when I run it through a planer, this mm -hmm. machine right here, mm -hmm. 
I'll take that perfectly flat part, flip it upside down on this perfectly flat bed. Right. And the blade on this one's on the top. Okay. This one is on the bottom, and it shaves it perfectly parallel and flat. Okay. So you get an absolutely flat board, All right. which is very necessary on a tabletop. Okay. Makes uh, sense. Yeah. So I know you really want uh, some sawmill marks showing. I do. Yes, I do. So I'm going to run this over and try not to take too much off so we can leave some of those in. Okay. All right? Great. So we'll do that right now. so the board will be absolutely perfect. Great, okay, right. and, and then for the joiner, when you want to join this together, you'll run it on its yeah. side? Yeah, once you have a perfectly flat board top and bottom, uh -huh. you put it against this perfectly flat surface, okay. and that, and you get a nice 90 degree cut To join perfect. it together, okay. okay, great. So I'll cut this machine on. This one takes a dust collector, so uh, I'm gonna have to cut on a slightly noisy dust collector. When you're trying to leave sawmill marks, you don't want to take too much off. That's why I'm trying to be very, uh, careful with it. Okay, so this is the side that just went through, is that right? Right. Okay, so what happens here, Tom? Like, what a, Well, I tell you, um, I'm a little embarrassed since I'm on TV, but we just I just wiped out all your beautiful sawmill marks. But oh, actually... No. Um, you did. <laughs> <laughs> but what is, what's interesting is this is a decision time for each uh, craftsman, mm -hmm. because now uh, we left them in on the other side. Oh, okay. And this is a time when a craftsman has to flip the board over and decide which side goes on the top. All right. And it's kind of a gamble. You don't know until you run through the planer. We might have gotten better ones on this side. I see. But okay. since we didn't, uh, we're going to use the opposite side. Okay. So you'll, will you run it through again to take this off? No, we can leave that. That's actually okay. Uh, okay. When, oh, because yeah. it's going to be on the underneath side? It's going to be underneath. And yet, having a little that, when he hand planes it, uh, this will actually show up a few more sawmill marks right okay. where it's rough right now. Oh, okay. But the next step is I'll go ahead and hit the edge on the joiner so we have right. a perfectly straight edge. Right. And the way you do that, uh, I'm going to aim this right towards the camera. If you look down the edge, you want the side that's kind of C-shaped and arched a little bit. Right. Can you I see, see a little it right tiny in here one? somewhere? Yeah, it's only like an eighth of an inch. Uh-huh. But that way it'll hit on this side, and it'll hit on that end. It won't hit in the middle, just like it did before on right. the board. Until it's finally straight, we'll just keep on straighten passing. Straighten it out. Okay. So I'll run that back through the joiner here, and we'll get a perfectly straight edge for gluing up. Keep doing that. 
until you hear it cut all the way across. It should be this last one here. And then you have a perfect straight oh, edge. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. And that uh, when you put another board up to that, it will be flawless. How much does that board weigh, do you think? Um Chestnut's actually a fairly light wood. I would say this weighs about 25 pounds. Really? Because I'm just 30. noticing how many times you have to actually handle the board. Right. I mean, that's just one board out of six, maybe, from yeah. the top. And you run it through there three or four times yeah. over here, then back again three times. It's a lot. It, it burns Very, calories. Yeah, labor intensive, huh? Yeah, like no one who's been working on that hand plane, and he built that tabletop yesterday, and that's some very heavy maple. Uh huh. And uh, that's got one, two, three, four, five, six boards in the top, and it started out over two inches thick. And wow. it's a lot of work to, to get a tabletop all put together, and it's a, a lot, lot of lifting. manpower. Manpower. Yeah, there you manpower. Go. Okay, so you've planed these. Right. And you've joined them, is that right? Yeah. We, Over we, here, but. Right, we cut that joiner edge right? there. So what happens to this side? Because this is still rough, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot <laughs> Whoops, to tell you, you about forgot. that. <laughs> well, anyhow, uh, everything in woodworking is about joining and being parallel. If okay. it's not parallel, it never goes together right. Okay. That's why a lot of guys they'll come in here, look at our showroom, and they tell their wife, "Oh, yeah, I'll make you, a, I'll make you a table." And they go home and they run through the table saw and through a planer, but they don't go over a joiner. Right. And whatever goes into a planer comes out of a planer. So if it's crooked and goes in, it okay. may be shaved flat looking, but right. it comes out warped again okay. out the other side. One thing I didn't tell you about the planer is 1,500 pounds of pressure putting down on that board with uh, pushing it down as it planes it, so that wow. it pushes it flat. Right. If it's not but it comes back out warped, oh, although gotcha. it is planed. Right. So same thing with this edge here. Okay. We got this edge absolutely flawlessly straight with the joiner. Right. But if I just now rip it on the table saw and uh, run it through, it will be parallel, but it won't be glue worthy. It won't have that right. perfect surface. Smooth surface. So what I'm gonna do right now is rip this off so it will be <clears throat> parallel from the joint. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna run it over the joiner one last time and make sure that it has a perfectly jointed edge to glue up to the next edge and so forth to make your leaf. Okay, and you wouldn't you wouldn't just run this through the joiner because why? Because uh, this edge is perfectly straight. Right. But at a sawmill, there's nothing perfect in the real world. As they're sawing a log, mm -hmm. a lot of times you look at a board and you think it's straight. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've had them up to an inch and a half different from one edge to the other. Okay. You know, from one end to the other. Oh, okay. Uh, so when, then when you put two boards together, you might have like a V. Yeah, you know, exactly. A, a space. Okay, it, yep. gotcha. I understand. We've glued up tabletops before doing it that way just mm -hmm. to see what happens. And sometimes they'll be three quarters of an inch off by the time you glued up all the defects really? at, from one end to the other. Which some people like, uh -huh. but other people don't like. Right. But if you're having leaves like you are, right. we have to have both ends exactly the same. Okay. So I'll go ahead and rip this, and then we'll uh, join it over there, and then I'll show you how we put them together. Okay, All right. great. I'm going to put this on, which I don't always do. I should. <laughs> All right. I see a nail here. That, you can tell Noah's been sawing today because uh, oh, wow. that's a nail that came out of one of those. Oh, it's a square nail. Yeah, it's an old-fashioned square nail. I'll be darned. Yep. Nice. That nail's probably as old as I am. Wow, that's old. <laughs> All right, here we it? go. So these are ready to join? These are ready. We're going right. to join them right now. Great. Let's go. All right. One perfect edge. Beautiful. What am I going to do now? Perfect now. All right. 
Our next step will be going to uh, dowel them together to make okay. your leaf. All right, looking forward to it. All right, we'll bring these over here to make the leaf. Okay, great. Now, are you going to do that for us? I'm going to let Noah. Noah is amazing uh. at uh, doweling and gluing. I, seriously, I know we're on TV, but he does it twice.